Today we are going to look at the VDM IP, its configuration, and use it in a very small implementation on the Pink G2. It is mostly used in designs that have video pipelines. A video pipeline can have many components like a source, like a camera, an input interface like an HDMI in, processing blocks like the video scaler, noise reduction, image characterization, memory and timing controllers like timing controller and the video DMA and compression blocks and other similar blocks. But in this video, we are only going to look at the video DMA. Here we have our Vivado design open and we are going to take a look at the block design. So this is the block design of the video pipeline that we are designing. So basically, this uh, design has only two IP blocks. So this is the VDMA IP that we will be configuring. And this is the processing system through which we will configure the VDMA. Now let's take a look at the VDMA configuration page. You can double click the VDMA IP and our configuration page will load. You can specify the address width in this field. By default, the uh, VDMA IP will have three frame buffers. And for our application, we are only going to use one. The VDMA IP has two channels, one read and the write. Both can be configured independently. For our application, we are going to enable both of these channels. You can configure the width of the data bus of the read channel from this dropdown. And for our application, 64 is totally fine. And we can also configure the read bus size. You can configure this to the maximum value that is available for the maximum bus utilization. And the stream data width, we are going to use 24 because we are transferring three bytes of data per clock. You can configure the line buffer depth to these available values, but make sure you do not use uh, more than what is needed because this also utilizes the available resources. And we configure the right channel exactly similar to the read channel. And under the advanced tab, change the f-sync options to none for both channels. And you can select online transfers and gen lock mode to dynamic slave for the rear channel and dynamic master for the right channel. And then select OK. The VDMA will require access to the DDR to restore data that it is transferring or receiving from. And the DDR is only accessible through the high performance port. That is why you need to configure the processing system too. So double click the processing system. And go to PSPL configuration. Or you can also select the high performance XI select ports. And that will take you to the configuration page. And uh, expand the SP slave XI in interface and enable the SP0 interface. And this will enable the SP0 port through which the IPs can access the DDR. So from this design, what we are going to do is store the data into the DDR and, and ask the VDMA to read the data through this interface. And the VDMA will send those read data through this interface. And in this interface, we are just having a stream of data. And we are just sending this stream of data back to the input of the VDMA so that we can send it back to the DDR. So what we are basically doing is just replaying the data back to the DDR through this interface. So we connect this interface to this slave interface and from this slave interface, the data will be written back through this interface back to the DDR. We also connect these interrupt lines from the VDMA to the input interrupt lines of the processing system through a concatenation block. These IP blocks are only for debugging purposes. These are not really necessary and these can be removed. And we have a processing system reset that is responsible for generating resets for the peripherals that we have. Basically, this is the whole design that we will be using in the pink environment in Jupyter Notebook. And make sure you save the design and generate the bitstream. After the bitstream is generated, select the file menu and select the export option. 
and then select the export hardware option then select next select the include page stream option select next and export the xsa that is the hardware platform file to a known location select next and then select finish now open up a directory where you exported that xsa file and then open that xsa file with a program like winrar and extract this page stream and this hardware handle file these two files are required for us uh, to configure the FPGA from the Python program. Now after you have extracted this bit file and the hardware handle file to a folder, boot up your ping device and after the ping device has booted, open up the browser and navigate to this location if you are connecting with an uh, Ethernet cable. And after you access that URL, you can create a new folder from here. I already have a folder, BDMA and you can move into that and you can again create a new folder to put in the hardware randoff and the bit file you can upload in this location but i have created a new folder again and select the upload option and you can upload these two files in this location so i have already uploaded these two files so i'll move back to the previous location now what we have here is a IPYNB file that is the notebook file and I'm going to open this I cleared previous outputs now this is a program that transfer an image data from the PS to the VDMA IP and that VDMA IP will send out a crop version of that image back to the PS and that image is later displayed in this notebook so if the VDMA if it's an IP that is used for the video applications, why are we transferring an image? That is because the video are made up of frames and images can be thought of a frame of that video. That is why we are transferring an image data because it is easier to understand. So in this first cell, we are just importing some libraries and modules that we can use in this Python program. And we have some variables that has a path to that bitstream and some images and now we are calling an overlay function and passing that bitstream to that overlay function and what that does is give us an object of that Vivado design through which we can access all the elements of that design now after we get an object or an overlay of that whole design we get an instance of this PDMA IP through this name this name is the name of the PDMA IP that we used in the Vivado design. If we now take a look at that Vivado design, we have that PDMA IP here, and the name of the PDMA IP is PDMA. At the beginning, the name of the PDMA IP will not be just the PDMA. You can change the name in this field so that it becomes easier to remember and to use in the Python program. Now let's run the first two cells. Now in the third cell, we are opening an image named Sahara and uh, displaying into this interactive notebook environment. So if we run this and wait for a moment and we will have a picture of the Sahara desert in this place. We have this image. This is the original dimension of this image. And what we are trying to do with this uh, demo is try to crop it at this dimension. So that would only be around this section of this image. Now in the fourth cell, we have some allocate functions that allocate some space or memory to store this image. And we also have an output buffer that stores the output sent by the VDM IP. Now what we are doing in this line is transferring the original data into the input buffer and we are retrieving the address of the input and output buffer and if we run the cell we get the input and output address of the buffer these addresses are required by the vdma ip so we pass these addresses to the vdma ip in the fifth cell now in the fifth cell we are resetting the vdma with this code and if we take a look into this documentation that is pg020 that's the documentation for the xi vdma IP and if we take a look into the register space section we see that 00H is for the control register for the memory map to stream PDMA channel 
And similarly, we have the 04 for the memory map to stream BDMA status register and similar other registers are defined in this section. Now if we take a look at the 00H offset, we have reset at bit number 3. So if we take a look at our Python program, we are writing to this register and we are writing a value of 4. 4 in binary is 100 and if we map 100 into this register, we will have 1 at this place and 0 at this place. So what we are essentially doing is telling the VDMA to reset itself to a known state. We are doing the same for the another channel of the VDMA and we wait until the resets are done. Now we are writing a hexadecimal value of 93 at this offset. If we convert this to binary, that would be 1001 and 0011. Now if we map this value to this register, we will have 1 at the first and the second bit locations and we will have 1 at the eighth and the fifth location. Now if we check the description, we know that writing a 1 at this bit location will start the VDMA operations and writing a 1 to this second bit location will start the engine continuously and that engine cycles through the frame buffers. We also enable the frame count by writing a 1 at this bit location and writing a 1 at this 8th bit location will select the internal then lock bus. Therefore, writing a value of 93 at this offset will start the VDMA operations and then the engine will continuously cycle through the frame buffers. At offset 5c, we just pass the address of the input buffer because we are trying to read from the input buffer. At offset 58, we are writing the width of the input image and multiplying that by 3. We are multiplying by 3 because every pixel of that input image will have 3 bytes to represent a pixel. Let us use this pixel as a reference. Let's just consider these boxes as pixels of this image and use an utility to get the values of the RGB channels of each pixels. So now if we hover onto this pixel, we know the RBG value for this specific pixel is 255, 255 and 253. Now if we hover to the pixel below it, we have the red color and the values for the components of this pixel are 253, 2 and 0. So to store the values of these three channels, we will require 3 bytes. And this is the reason why we are multiplying the dimension by 3. And it is also the reason why we used a value of 24 while configuring this stream data width for the VDMA IP. The offset 54 is for the stride size. The value of the stride register tells the VDMA to go and start reading from another line if it ever reaches this specified location. So what we are writing in this location is the value of the width new variable. And we have 1280 in this variable. So if you take a look into this image again and consider this pixel to be the 1280th pixel, the VDMA will stop reading the next location or the next pixel data and start reading from the first pixel of the next line. And that continues until the VDMA reads the 720th line. In the offset 50, we are writing the new height of that image, that is 720, and we configure the another channel of the VDMA in the same way. We write a value of 93, same as before. We pass the address of this output buffer to which the VDMA IP will write the cropped image data. We write the width of the, the cropped image, and we are again writing the same value for the stride register because we do want to read up to the 1280th pixel again and again until the 720th line of the image and we write the height of the new image and we wait until that VDMA has completed operation and halted its engine. Now we read from this output buffer where the VDMA has written the cropped image data and constructed an image from that data and we plot that image into this interactive notebook environment. So now if we run this cell and also run this cell we have the cropped section of that previous image. We can also save this image to this location. So if we check this location now, there is only one picture. So if we run the cell, we will have another picture that has the cropped section of this original picture. So if we open that, we have the cropped image. So that is it for this tutorial. We'll see you again in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching.